still organizing let's hope you can see what I'm doing okay Just uh, still organizing all the things here, and it would let uh, uh, people come in. So I'm not starting yet. Just making sure I have all the stuff that I want to show you. I'll probably forget uh, <laughs> some other stuff. Let's see. Now I need to again the chat to see if it will work Okay, and I've got the chat. Hi Brenda, hi Lynn, Sonia, Linda. Kim. Mm. I'm just letting uh, people time to come in and I'll start in a moment. Today I'm going to show you what I'm doing with all the little pieces of paper scraps all I had left from making the calendars I just had to use and of course now I have more because I found another calendar and I still got all of this <laughs> uh, to use but I'm getting better uh, at using all of the stuff and it would be nice uh, to show you all the things today Let's see. After Kim, is there something more in the chat or is it again stuck? At, at least at my end, it, uh, it looks like it's stuck. Yeah, I'm, it's probably stuck. Don't know why it's always giving me trouble. Okay, I can see after Kim Linda. 
and lean Phyllis oh okay so it seems like the check is <laughs> is back on okay let's hope it will stay like that <laughs> we are poised for the action to start <laughs> you are cracking me up Linda I, I just uh, seen your comment in uh, Facebook about <laughs> everything and the sink <laughs> made me laugh hi Vicky the, uh, I, I, I'm I hope I'm uh, saying it okay. Hi, Sonia and Therese or something like that. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Hi, Phyllis. Okay, yes, the chat is working now. <laughs> so, last live I showed you two big sheets of uh, paper that I glued to them all these uh, little scraps of paper uh, this one is half of what they uh, used to be here is what was left from <laughs> the other half and of course I'll show you all the the stuff that I already made and we are going to do all all those stuff together so this is a uh, half of it and here I glued the little pieces by just uh, cutting all kinds of uh, rectangles. Didn't care about being accurate or anything. Just used scissors and stuck them with white glue. I have glued them to white Bristol paper uh, just so I will have a nice substrate to work on. And also because a lot of glue. I didn't want to use it on something very thin like printer paper so and here this is the other big sheet of Bristol paper that I've cut in half just so it would be easier to work on here is this and here I just tore uh, the pieces so all the edges are torn again it, it doesn't have to be like this it doesn't have to be like that the whole point is just to take all the little scraps and do something with them if you have strips do strips if you want to punch the, all the leftover uh, in circles or in, or in uh, squares whatever <laughs> whatever floats your boat then do that and glue it to your uh, to whatever paper you chose so basically what I, we are I'm going to do today is I'm going to take a uh, one of this and I'm going to turn it into a master board and I will explain what is a master board and what uh, we can do with it and I just want to show you some examples of what I have already done and it's all from the what I'm calling a master board and it started by taking a larger piece and making a cover for this jo journal. This is one of the calendars that we've done together. You've seen me uh, make. It was the cheapest one. Uh, didn't have a hard cover. And it was something that I got from the supermarket. So here is all the pages that I, uh, oh, I made one page okay <laughs> forgot about it so i just took a large piece of the master board and made a cover and that's it and i just put this on because i like something in the front that makes it different from the back so i know where it starts and when it's uh, where is the <laughs> finish so and then i went and took a and cut two pieces that will go on this a greeting cards the greeting cards I bought a package 
I don't remember if it was from Temu or from AliExpress, but they come like this. Uh, envelopes with the base for the greeting card. So very easy to use. So I just uh, cut a rectangle. Now I can I could have left it like this and added some words. And here I decided to add some focal point uh, that matches the background. And with the leftovers of the leftovers of the leftovers, I've punched this two butterflies and glued to the envelope. And after that, <laughs> I made a bookmark and I made two tags and I still had uh, leftovers. So I made a two, this was the first time I've done this. Uh, it was an experiment. I really like what uh, came out of it. So I'm going to show you how to make it. It's, um, I'm not sure what's the name for it. Uh, probably nap napkin ring that and just because i didn't have here um i just i have just done it so and i didn't have any fabric uh, napkin here i took this bandana and used it as if it is so just i will show you how to do it it's so simple you won't believe how simple it is to do something like that here we go and after i made this and I still was left with this piece of paper so I can still make other stuff and then I figured that this is nice but maybe it would be nicer to make the uh, napkin rings on a, another substrate and I uh, just glued it still a little bit wet on a this is craft foam. I glued pieces to craft foam and we'll see if it will work. Uh, I will uh, save it for later because as I said I just made it. It's still wet and so we'll start with something else. This is going to be for later. Okay so and I also made some backgrounds just to show you uh, again how it can be appropriated for backgrounds in a journal and so we'll start somewhere. Okay, as I said, first of all, it doesn't matter how you put the pieces on whatever substrate you have. You want torn, you want cut, you want punched, however here it's just torn pieces here i have more of a movement that goes like this and i make i make a lot of this kind of backgrounds sometimes i leave it as is sometimes i like to make all the edges um, more prominent on the page as part of the design in the back sometimes most of the time i will use a gold marker and sometimes I will use black and uh, let's see I'll use black now just so you can see the effect of it it's really simple I'm just tracing the edges I've done a larger pages like this and sometimes I even left it as is because I really like the, well, what can I call it? The abstract that showed up on the page and I didn't feel the need for a focal point. Now, uh, as long as it's just like this, it, it looks out of place, but if you will take this and do the borders of the page with this with the, the black marker then it will uh, come together into a more coherent unified
page. Now I'm going about it quite quickly because it really doesn't matter. I just want to show you very simple way to go about using the scraps and how uh, how easy it is and how fast it is. Of course, the gluing takes a little bit more time, but <laughs> what can you do? I can do pages uh, of this. I can just go and do a whole notebook just with this kind of thing. So I'm uh, leaving it as is. Just wanted to show you. Of course, I can decide to put here a focal point. Let's see if I have something quick on hand just so you will see how it looks. Let's see. Let's see. Just like that. We've got an interesting background, a unique background, because you can never do the same thing <laughs> again. And this is just for an example. Okay. Maybe later on I will stick the butterfly here. I'm not sure. I'm leaving it as is. Now, even in a background like this, uh, sometimes I've... Uh, I've done again the same thing I've done here traced all the borders of each piece because it creates an interesting pattern in the back but not always this is just one way to go another way to go with this kind of background I'm covering now uh, how to use it as background and afterwards I'm going to move to making the master board and all the other stuff just so you will know where we at a one way to go about uh, using this as background first of all i've been known to use it as is nothing to it just as is another way is or to again it's either unifying all the pieces by either stamping or stenciling the same element all over or push it back push the background back pushing back the background is done with a wash a wash can be from an acrylic paint or a diluted gesso or um, anything that is a um, translucent so it won't cover nothing opaque if you uh, have acrylics and uh, you need to water them down you have like inks that are a translucent you can use it to push it back I'm going to take some kind of uh, acrylic paint that I know is very thin so I'm and I'm going to go over now where is it now here we go I knew if I forgot something okay here we go so as you know, gesso is the uh, diluted gesso, will push it back, will tone it down. I'm going for something else right now. I'm going to use this turquoise paint just so you will see uh, how it looks. Let's take a sponge. Taking out. This can be done with a sponge, it can be done with baby wipe, and just experiment. Take a notebook or a, an old book that uh, you, you don't care about and just um, experiment. Do each page with something, else. it can be even a little notebook. So I'm just taking it and I'm not diluting it because I know that th this a paint is very thin so I'm just going very quickly over the page it pushes uh, it back and it unifies all the pieces okay 
I've done uh, something like this. I've, I've got it even uh, framed and in the living room. Here we go. I just made something a little bit more interesting and unified just by doing a wash on top of it. Now you treat it like any other art journal page. You can stamp, you can stencil, you can glue things, you can put whatever you want on top of it. Let's see. Again. I'm trying to see if I've got something just to show you. Just a little piece. Here we go. Just for the example. So you can see how it works. I'm trying to find something else. Even, I think even this uh, postcard that I saved from Budapest would work nicely here and let's see maybe even this is a drawing that I made I showed you how I'm doing my drawings not all of them but this is one of the examples that it was a photo and I made the drawing uh, from the photo so here we go another example Just looking at all kinds of stuff that can be interesting. Okay, so that's another way to go about it. Let's move. So that's the wash. And of course, as I said, you can stencil, stamp, whatever you want on top. I'm moving this aside. And... Let's go to making a master board. Master board can be basically anything. This is just one way to go about it by using all the little paper scraps. And I'm forgetting to watch uh, what's going on in the chat. So I'm going to pick at the chat and also drink something because I'm parched. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mm. You could use yellow. You basically you can use any almost any color or as long as it's a translucent I've done it, I've uh, tried it, and it works. And if you are uh, not sure, as I said, just make some experiments, even in a small notebook. And also, you can at first dilute with more water. So, and if you need more, then you add. You can't subtract, but you can start light and just add more on top. I know you are not yelling, <laughs> but you can yell. Okay, I hope I haven't missed anything. So, master board. Master board can be just paint, master board can be a glued pieces any kind of collages, whatever you want to have on a large piece of paper. And you don't, any kind of large piece of paper before someone asks me for <laughs> measurements. <laughs> the point is that you take a large piece of paper and you start using it, making something on top of it, and then you use it for several things. 
if it's tags, if it's bookmarks, if it's greeting cards, cover for an art journal, background in an art journal, whatever you want to do with it. So, and this is the start for a, a master board. So, uh, each one uh, like uh, to do uh, different stuff. I like to add all kinds of elements, mostly in this kind of a um, project I will use more stenciling because stamping on all these pieces uh, it create there is texture with all this uh, paper glued down so stenciling is easier if you are really keen on stamping you have a stamp that you must have on your master board it's easier to stamp on white backing of paper napkin or on tissue paper and then glue it to uh, this and I, let's take a tissue paper or the backing of a paper napkin and I will show you so you can see okay here is the white backing of paper napkin and let's take I like text so let's take some text and and you need to uh, on this kind of thing you need to use permanent uh, ink pad like a memento like stays on like archival ink because you're going to use glue and it's wet so you need something that is a uh, permanent okay let's put something underneath where did i put it oh here it is too much stuff Just so I won't have a transfer from the ink. Another ink pad that I need to re ink. I'm not really concerned about the stamping and accuracy and uh, or anything. Okay, so we'll use it on this in creating the master board. Uh, I'll just use it in a moment. I want to start with some stenciling. Now again, stenciling, pick whatever you like, whatever it floats your boat um, I like to pick uh, stencils mostly when they have all kinds of elements like here I have got um, arrows I've got even a circle I've got numbers I've got letters uh, even this small stencil has some all kinds of things going on I've got what else i i just put here some stencils i made this today just cut some spirals on a boring a 12 by 12 and i've got this stencil that just you move it like this it's a haven't seen a, this kind of thing in nowhere else it's from here from israel so okay so let's see uh, on the other uh, one that i've done i used uh, this spiral and i used this flower and what else did i use on and i made all kinds of marks with circles and with markers 
You can use anything. You don't have stencils. You don't have uh, stamps. Use markers. You can do it. It's very easy. Uh, any, anything can make you mark. So let's see. I like most. I like to use on top to make a master board. I like to. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, stamping or stenciling. I like to work with white, black, and sometimes gold. Uh, anything that would be uh, neutral because I've got all these uh, colors going on here so I'm looking for things that would be neutral uh, on top I can go gray but I've done before I also I also decided like on uh, dark blue or dark green it's really up to you but mostly that's what I'm doing mostly I'm going with white and black and all kinds of stuff. So, let's see. I'm going to start with white. I really like to use this one for uh, the white. Don't know why, but it works for me. So, I'm keeping at it. And let's see. I'll move this a little bit. Let's take this. I'll put some white on top here. Okay, got some white, got a makeup sponge, and now I'm just going to spread this around randomly. No overthinking, it's just, a, think of it as layer. Another layer to whatever project you are making, it doesn't matter. It's, it's more details in the back. It doesn't need to be precise or anything. And in this kind of a thing, I just, I found out that the more the merrier. There is no point that you need to stop. Just have fun with it until you are satisfied with the outcome. Okay, so the thing is, is to repeat elements and it really doesn't matter what the element is. The thing is that you need to create a pattern and pattern is created by using the same thing over and over again. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. It just needs to be in several places all over whatever a uh, space whatever <laughs> you have even if i worked on a smaller scale again i will spread this out i'm flipping um, this just so it would be easier and that i won't get myself and all the other stuff uh, in the paint because I'm just talented like that. Always getting myself in the paint. I like to have um, the elements going outside the borders of the page. I like it. I don't know why. It just is. And as I, and as I said... Don't overthink it, just make something on top. Don't care if some of the white is disappearing here because there is white. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So, let's uh, move to black. I'm going to use this stencil and I'm going to put some black acrylic paint here. Okay. 
Okay. Another sponge, just because I'm not looking for gray. And again, not overthinking. I'm... Now, of course, if you are working on a smaller size, then a pick elements that are smaller. So you want to <laughs> have one element uh, all over the page. I'm not even concerned about when I'm doing this that if I, st I started uh, stenciling here, I'm not concerned that the whole uh, shape of the three will be here. I'm just adding elements. It really doesn't matter. You pick whatever you want. Now, when you are doing something with letters and numbers, uh, just decide uh, firsthand if it bothers you, if it's uh, in a right direction or not, if it bothers you, if it's uh, wonky or not, just so you will know what you are going to make out of it later on. Okay, let's see. I'm not doing the circle here because it's not something that I want to repeat in other uh, places on the page. I will do other circles or whatever with something else. Oops, here we go, into the paint. I told you. I can also flip it. Nothing has to be perfect. Okay, let's pick another uh, element to do on this. Let's do some wonky spiral. I need more paint. Maybe, no, I'll just stay with the black for now. I thought about introducing another color, but I'll just go with the black here we go I'm just playing with the shape. I don't need it to be in the same direction each time because it really doesn't matter to me. And as I said, you don't have to have stencils. You can take all kinds of uh, round objects and stamp them. And there are so many uh, stuff all over that can be used to make marks Not enough room. 
I'm also overlapping, as you can see, some is going uh, over the white. It really doesn't matter. It's just another layer. I'm treating the page as a whole and not by each element that I'm putting on. Okay, enough of this. Let's wipe the mess that I've done before it dries on the mat. Okay. Good enough. Now I'm switching to marker just it, so you can see how easy it is this is just a permanent marker and it can be anything uh, that you want you can just do all kinds of marks again as long as you repeat it that what creates interest so no need for fancy <laughs> stamps and stencils. I can take white and just do some, I can write, I can just doodle something as long as it repeats. So, really endless options. Ah, I need to... I need to buy new white markers. Yeah. Of course it doesn't work to now. Okay, let's take a black one. Does it work? No. <laughs> this one works almost let's hope so you see just making something whatever feels good for you if it's spirals if it's i don't know circles whatever And of course, you can make marks, as I said, with whatever. I'm going to take some uh, circle and do some circles on this. I want white because I, I want more white on my master board. Uh, okay. Mm -mm -mm. Again, doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Just part of making something interesting. 
now my master board is very colorful I really didn't care about what uh, leftovers I'm using but you can decide that you want to go with some kind of a color palette it's also fine and it will give you just a different result I can I think I can even show you a master board if well I call it a master board but I took magazine pages that were in the same uh, range of color glued them to another uh, I think it was a 12 by 12 an ugly one at that so and I made myself another master board I'm going to see I want a smaller circle so here we go and let's see if I can find what I'm talking about here we go okay. here it is just from a magazine and I've got another master board that I can work with in all kinds of blue. Okay, so that was that. <laughs> Continuing to a smaller circle. Even the underside of whatever shoes you have will make mark. So many stuff can go in making interesting pattern, even if work. Okay, so that's that. And I can also add something interesting to the elements. I've got some a metallic markers. Let's see. I'm just taking one and I can just add some dots. to the wonky spirals that I stenciled it's endless you can do so many stuff and I still uh, have the stamps white backing of paper napkin that I told you we will glue down to this page haven't forgot about it Almost done. I hope I haven't missed the spiral. Oh, it seems okay. So now I have to find here it is. Don't know how much of it will show again. The uh, pad, <laughs> the ink pad was not that great. I'm going to take out. Uh, the pieces with a fine uh, brush with water 
because when you've got this kind of edges it disappears better into the background Just taking it out. Okay. Okay, that's enough. As I said, I'm not sure how much it will uh, show on the masterboard, but we'll use it. Okay, so let's hope I won't mess air anything because I still got wet paint here. And I will move this before I have another accident with this. Okay, so like anything... To do with paper napkins it's better if the glue is the white glue is a little bit uh, diluted with water otherwise it will drag on the paper napkin and tear it another thing is to use flat very soft brush and I'm taking the glue putting down nice cover going on top I glued it <laughs> upside down never mind again it's just details here we go Always with the flat of the brush from the inside towards the outside and with a lot of glue so it will slide and not drag. And you can also use, do the same thing as I said on a, with tissue paper, although I prefer to do it on the backing of paper napkin because it's uh, more trans, uh, transparent than working with tissue paper but tissue paper is easier to work with so up to you what you like to do tissue paper is more sturdy Okay, not really concerned where it is, again, just putting it down. Of course, this needs to be <laughs> dry before I do anything. And let's see. Okay, so I've got here an area that <laughs> seems dry. So again, you start with cutting and depends on what you want to do with it. And I start from bigger to uh, from large stuff like the cover I've done. The cover that I've done for the journal. So it took almost like uh, all of this uh, stuff. And again, it just glued it to 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 the <laughs> cover that was a uh, of this calendar and the only thing i've i've done is i uh, used <laughs> it's i'm tired i can't find the words a um, corner puncher 
so it would be uh, more round and I went with an, an ink pad all around and just darken the edges like this I always have a cheap ink pad to use for this kind of stuff I think this one I bought I maybe I'm not sure in Flying Tiger a long time ago I'm not sure that they still have uh, ink pads so let's see what's going on in the chat Okay, I hope I, did, I didn't miss anything. Okay. Mm. So as I uh, said, I start with the large pieces and then with the leftover again, uh, making other stuff. And I'm going to use uh, my uh, heat tool so if you don't like uh, the sound of it, mute me. That's the problem with this project. The glue, the glue. It takes time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a greeting card. Let's see. And I'm going to use from this uh, part that I don't have any wet glue. And let's see. Maybe this background will work. Let's see this one also. I'm going to take the red one. And I don't measure anything. <laughs> so what I'm always doing is just taking a pencil, deciding approximately from where to where I want my rectangle to go. So making something like this and where is the, here it is, okay and what I do is I line, um, but this I haven't, I will have to measure, <laughs> goes to show me this is not straight. 
because I just cut it again just so I will have two pieces and I won't have to work on a larger piece I don't care so I, w I don't have a choice I will have to to measure somehow and it's a problem that I still have some wet glue just bear with me I'll try to do something without cutting my fingers I when I finished gluing all the pieces on this Bristol paper I let it dry completely and then I went over it with a, what's it called an iron I've ironed it because it was with all the glue it just was too um, wonky. I don't know what to call it. I'm not sure what is going on here. I'm measuring and it still looks wonky to me. It doesn't look straight. be easier if it dried did I tell you I want someone to invent a machine that dries all this stuff instantly I want my pages to go in in one, one way wet and the other one <laughs> way dry Okay, let's hope for the best. Just taking an eraser and to remove the pencil line from before. Okay. Now you can attach it however you want. If you want uh, something like score tape or any kind of other glue, it uh, works. Again, uh, here I went around with the ink pad I just like how it looks so and I'm not doing it precisely I don't care I think with all that's going on it really doesn't matter it doesn't need to be precise it looks kind of grungy 
so I like it. Yeah. And as you can see, it's a little bit uh, curvy, but what I do is I put some glue and then I put a heavy book on top of it. I'm staying a little bit away from the edges, so when I'm putting it on, the glue won't spread. And here I go outside. Hmm. Here we go. And I'm moving this to the side and I'm going to put some heavy book on top. And just letting it be, it works. So... <laughs> enough for me let's see still in place yes just putting it under this and I always like to have the envelope match in some way to the greeting card here is the envelope So I'm going to punch something out of the master board and I'm going to glue it here. Okay, punch, punch, I need a punch. Now because of all the paper it's a little bit thick so it would be kind of hard but it's doable. And I'm just picking something that would be interesting. Here we go. Of course, it doesn't have to be one. You can do whatever you want. I just put one here. It's enough for me just to make it interesting. But again, you can decorate however you want. Here we go. So this to the side and that was the greeting card. I can do, let's do a bookmark. I'm going to take this edge off because it doesn't look good. And let's see, I want it like this again going to align it with the lines on the mat just so it would be easier now it can be like this as is or you can do a, another piece of paper in the back like I've done with the one that I showed you in the beginning like this I took another piece of paper that I had and that I thought would be nice in the back but it can be a uh, like this depends what you like and of course I can also round the corners I can ink around the edges I can even on this decide that I want a focal point or uh, that I am leaving it as is. I can put words on the greeting cards you saw on one of them I added some focal point, another I just le left it as is. It's really up to you how you want to go about it. Let's see. Let's pick a background for this, something, I think, let's see.
this would look nice I think again I can cut it like this I can decide that I want it a longer here all kinds of stuff it can be done it's really up to you and what you like how you like uh, the bookmark to look and I'm thinking okay once again using the lines just because I'm lazy and I don't like to use the ruler to measure things <laughs> Mm -mm. I think I'll take it up to here, yeah. Once again, just putting some glue in the back and this also will get underneath or inside a book, also an option. Just make a sandwich. go and afterwards I will do the putting an eyelet and whatever but basically here it is that's my uh, bookmark I can just put it inside the book and leave it to dry and of course now I can do other stuff I can let's continue with this line I can do tags I can do all kinds of embellishments real easy I'm just doing it quite quickly so you can see all the things that can be done and how easy it is. Again, eyeballing it, I really don't care. Here we go. I've got an interesting tag. A nice tip for you, and I'm I'm doing it as just free and not a not measuring but if you want the two sides to be the same I'm uh, doing a large uh, triangle just so you can see what I'm doing because I, I prefer this kind of a uh, tag but right now I'm showing it to you uh, exaggerated just so you will see what I'm doing if you want it to be the same you cut the first a uh, triangle Flip it over, put it here on this side, and use this as a guide. And now it's even. Just a nice trick. 
okay so these were the tags again you can uh, you can cut whatever you want from it and use it already uh, like here is the piece that was left from the other project i can decide that i want for for something for an art journal page or whatever i want a heart i can cut a heart out of it what i love about this is that the randomness makes each piece unique i love it and the options are endless so now i've got a very special embellishment for another another thing in an art journal page or whatever or notebook whatever you want to do i can also use a punch again it just would be a little bit difficult because it's thick Oh, I have a problem with this wrist and now I just, okay, I made it somehow. Here we go. Even smaller stuff like I can just take out this strip and another one and i can use it as some kind of interesting border to an art journal page or a greeting card or all kinds of stuff like let's see like if i'm taking let's see a page that would work I can put one here, I can put one here, and here we go. Just so you can see how versatile and how this kind of project is so, I don't know, unique. That's the best word I can uh, use for this, because each piece will be always unique. I can, I can even do, I can all, already see how I'm going to do this page just by playing. Let's do another, another heart. Smaller one. And let's do another one. Just to give you some idea how this comes about okay i'm doing it on the other on the back side because i like the randomness although it doesn't have to be like a when i'm using a punch I can decide to do it on this on this side and see what I like. Sometimes I'm going about it like that, sometimes I go <laughs> the other way. Depends. Okay. So just going with the marker that I hope will work one of them. I need to go over all my markers. Oh my God. Okay. Just making a very loose squiggly line. I could also ink around the edges, but I'm going very free here. I don't like this. Uh, 
part. I'm going to do another one. It's thick and it's a little bit hard but can be done again going around very freely I'm also going around the butterfly just to keep all the elements in the same, I don't know what you call it, design, same line, same Okay. I hope I'm not boring you. Okay. I've, did I say I have too much things going on here? <laughs> really too much. Glue in the back for the hearts. And I'm thinking that I need more, another butterfly or something else here. Right now I'm just going to glue the butterfly and we'll see. Very simple page with just, with nothing. This is some painty paper with leftover uh, paint. This is from scraps of scraps of scraps of paper and all the elements the same. And let's see, I think.
just remembered maybe it will work here mm, not sure part of it no not sure about it not going to i'm going to leave this a uh, b for now and probably will add something uh, more later maybe just stamp a little bit of text because i like it but i don't want the whole block of it so i'm taking it like this leaving the page like this <laughs> so here it is <laughs> okay so that was the tags and now for the finish i i think i hope i haven't uh, forgotten anything i made a note with all kinds of stuff okay so the napkin uh, rings that i wanted to show you so simple here we go and i'm going to try to do it on this which i glued to the uh, craft foam just because i thought it would be a nicer a material for this kind of thing although it looks uh, good all just by cutting it from uh, the master board and maybe it would be even nicer on watercolor paper i don't know but i want to try and do it on this that's glued to craft foam Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, just cut a strip here and you decide what uh, width you want for your ring and the, the size. So it depends on your uh, napkin that you want to put. So let's see. So that's basically the ring, okay? Now I can already see that it's just a, too large. So I'm going to just take a, a piece out of it. And, but it doesn't matter for the demonstration. I'm flipping it over so you can see what I'm talking about, how uh, you connect the two sides. I will, uh, afterwards, I will show you how to do uh, the decoration on top it doesn't matter you can do whatever you want it doesn't have to be a butterfly or the heart that I showed you uh, at the beginning let's see where it got in here is the one with the heart it can be any shape that you want what you need is the strip and how to connect it and in each side you need to mark um at least um like it doesn't have to be even a centimeter no uh, it, it's better if you have a centimeter and let's see a centimeter in inches don't know if i can um one inch it's a little bit uh, smaller than half an inch I'm uh, making this uh, this is where I'm going to cut now 
you can cut uh, until uh, up to the middle or a little bit more. The only thing that matters in this that whatever if you cut uh, here uh, uh, up to here to the middle, you will have to do the same thing here up to the middle. If you are uh, going uh, three more like <laughs> the same length you have here needs to be here on this side and one needs to be at the bottom and one needs to be at, to at the top and now what you are doing is taking either the scissors or a, a cutter whatever like so and then you just like this here you have the ring it connects okay the top and the bottom go inside each other and that's the closure of the ring now in terms of a putting in a <laughs> I'm tired that's it everything <laughs> I don't have any words left in uh, in terms of decorating anything goes whatever shape you like this was a I've used a punch let's take the punch I'm now you uh, going to punch a um, the, this uh, master board, what was left of it. And sorry for the noise. Ah, it's too thick. Okay, so for the sake of demonstration, <laughs> now that I'm at the end of my rope, I'm going to take another piece of paper uh, let's take another piece of paper this is a oh, brushes on oh my wrist is killing me this is watercolor and uh, paper and brushes. So each, whatever element you pick, you, if it's a punch or you just cut it by hand, you just cut it in the middle like so. And then you put a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue here. Like so. And there you have it and it doesn't have you don't need to have a punch you can do whatever you want I can just as I as I showed you it can be anything I can let's do the heart again I'm just doing it freehand So I'm cutting it in half and again I'm demonstrating on the same I can ink around the edges I can doodle on it I can do many things but that's the basic thing how you make this a uh, napkin rings and of course you need to wait for it to dry <laughs> so it would be okay to use what I like about this is that I can open it and I can make like depending on how many guests is are going to be I can make a six eight twelve and keep them flat and it doesn't um, take space in any cupboard so <laughs> 
that's uh, what's great about it. You can just keep it uh, flat and when you want to use it, you just go and slide the two pieces like so. And there you have it. Now it's, you can also uh, do something like this and basically you can gift it to someone. I think it's a nice, really nice gift, like 12 or, um, rings like that can be really a nice gift for someone. Let's see what's going on in the chat after I talked so much. Oh my god. <laughs> Making space. <laughs> Let's see. Hi Trini. Hi, Tzviya. <laughs> okay. Any uh, questions for me before <laughs> I'm going to, <laughs> to sleep? <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you another thing with the background. Let's see. Another way to go about with this kind of uh, scraps and backgrounds, uh, this is another thing that I like to do. Now I'm doing it freehand, whatever focal point or whatever you want to do on your page. I'm, as I said, I'm going to do it uh, something. Uh, for God's sake, this permanent markers. Ah, nothing works. I'm just doing something so I can show you another way to go about this background. And you. I was missing something. Let's do another one. Well, very roughly just so I can show you uh, what to do uh, with this. Uh, where is the white paint? Although it doesn't have to be white. This is a, what's called an exclusion technique. You are going to basically eliminate the background. All kinds of ways to go about it. I once done it just by using a permanent marker, went all around. Uh, with a permanent marker there are there are all kinds of colors so it doesn't even have to be black another way to go about it is with a, an acrylic paint and I also like even in this technique I like to dilute it a little bit let's uh, go about it again with this paint because as I said it's already a um, very thin and let's take a brush so again you are just going and eliminating 
part of the background. Now, I like that some of the background is shown, but it can be also opaque. This is completely up to you how you like it. If you like some of the details picking, or if you want it completely opaque and whatever uh, your focal point is showing. This brush is not great, but doesn't matter just to show you what I'm talking about and so that you get an ID. how it's going to look. And you don't even have to use the same color all over the page. Again, I've done this with alternating with colors, with blending, but you just need to experiment and find through experimenting what you like. The brush is a little stiff, so it's kind of hard to use. I really like how some of the details are peeking through the paint. I think it's more interesting than if I covered it completely like with black marker or any acrylic uh, paint that is opaque. I'm not very precise right now. I want to, uh, I really want you to see the effect. Don't care about the brush marks, just covering right now. So I think you get what I'm going for. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> it's not enough for you, Linda.
Now I've done it with black marker and very quickly again you can do it with any color you want if you want it in white or with gold or whatever and it doesn't even have to be hand drawn you can stencil or glue whatever focal point you want and go around it I can go and add more details to the leaves. Uh, I could have, uh, before uh, doing my focal point, I could have treated the entire page again like a master board. I could have stenciled, stamped, and all after that do the in exclusion so it doesn't even have to be right on top of just the tone paper. Here we go. <laughs> I've done it. It's not precise or anything, but just so you get the idea of what's going on. Let's see. Okay, so <laughs> I'm finished for today, <laughs> pun intended. Today, tomorrow, uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you will try your hand at it and use all your scraps instead of just leaving them in some stash or bin. Use it or lose it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for leaving me comments down below or in the chat. <laughs> However you think uh, to leave me a comment. And I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.